In this video, we're going over a day trade recap from Dr. Metals. Dr. Metals is one of the best zero DTE traders in the world, and he has a course out called the Statistical Day Trading Course. If you want to learn from him, we encourage you to take a look at that course or join the Dorian Trader, and you can learn firsthand from him and others at the Dorian Trader. What's going on? Hey, Dr. Meadows, I'm glad to hear your voice because I, <laughs> I wanted to what? hear what was going on yesterday because that was that was some really well, good trading. Well, you know, to be honest, man, so, sometimes when things get a little, you know, complicated, uh, I hesitate to to post sometimes from on the Tasty account. Mm -hmm. um, the the E-Trade account is generally uh, kept more simple because I don't uh, I don't move things around as much. I don't have the buying power to screw around as much with it. The downside mm -hmm. to that account is that it doesn't it doesn't uh, maintain a good ledger to be able to show like, you know, a, like a stop out position that closed earlier or a roll or that kind of thing. So that, that's mm -hmm. also kind of, it, it kind of just shows your ending position. So like the one day I posted last week where it looked like um, on the E-Trade account that I was mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. it actually, it actually was a scratch day because I had to recover from a, a call side stop out uh, one of the posts earlier. But, mm -hmm. but yesterday was kind of, you know, I didn't, I didn't trade on Monday because of the war thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it probably was a good thing and that I probably would have gotten stopped out on the call side. We had that vicious rally mm -hmm. at like around two o'clock or something like that. And I mean, I just, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to be a little, a little more selective. I mean, obviously I love this trade, but on days where I'm mm -hmm. anticipating there might be some movement, maybe just sitting out. And like yesterday we had a little macroeconomic news. I think, was it free market? I forget what it was yesterday. Um, let me quickly, quickly review that. Um, we yeah, had yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember anything serious yesterday. But... Oh wait a minute. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. That was Tuesday, right? Yeah, yeah. It's Tuesday. Uh, actually, Tuesday. actually, yeah. Actually, I take that back. Yeah, there, there was actually nothing yesterday. Okay, okay. so, um, so what happened? Um, first off, let me let me see if I can't blow things up a little bit here so I can see my darn self. Um, my initial, as soon as I put the position on, mm -hmm. it looks like my initial position, my initial call position, let me see was the uh, forty was the was a 4,400, I think, there. 4,400, right? okay, all right. Yeah, and, so and as you guys will recall, we, we started to, you know, it was kind of a tale of two halves, like the beginning part of the day, things were just marching up and up and up, you know? And as soon as I put the position on, it started mm -hmm. to kind of go against me. Mm -hmm. And so I wound up doing um, what essentially was almost like a, a cash neutral roll up in that I took a partial loss there and mm -hmm. reopened five points up higher at 4405, okay? Mm -hmm. And then on the put side, you see my initial put position was the 4295, and I closed that out for a partial win there and moved up to the 4310, and then I actually even kind of rolled up again mm -hmm. um, at there. And when you add those two numbers together, that's about uh, uh, 700 bucks there or whatever, and it mm -hmm. you know was almost neutral to the to what I to, to what I suffered as my closeout on the call side, so that was kind of like a cash neutralish kind of roll up kind of deal, right? Okay, this is this is what you talk about in the statistical day trading course, yeah, correct? It, it, yeah, exactly. And again, I'll do this sometimes when the trade starts to go against me like pretty quickly, which again we were kind of just moving straight up for a while, mm -hmm. and then I wound up rolling up. Uh, it looks like let me let me let me let me be clear on this. Okay. So what wound up happening after those couple of roll-ups, okay, mm -hmm. we actually got to go back to the 43.45 put where you see that big stop out there, okay? So, oh, okay, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, we got to go there first, actually. Okay. 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 So we, we went there, mm -hmm. and, then, and, then our, and then our call position, again, was the 44.05, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, we were, I, thought I was going to be kind of on easy street after that, and then we had that really vicious sell-off. You know, we, went, we were up like... A full percent or so and we went down to, we, we lost a half a percent very very quickly yeah um, if you remember that drop so mm -hmm. then I wind up getting stopped out on that put side right mm -hmm. and then uh, I kind of waited for things to kind of settle down a little bit and then I wound up re-entering at 4320 okay, okay a new position there okay right, and then okay. yeah and then as the market kind of rallied up again a little bit or stayed put Mm -hmm. I rolled up a little bit, or actually, I think I put on some additional risk at that 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 five hundred and ten uh, dollars at the uh, forty forty three thirty right there. I think I actually put on just actually a few more contracts at that strike. Okay, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, 
basically. Yeah, so that's how that wound up happening. So th this is initially, you know, essentially like a re-entry after that big drop and, 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 you know, was able to win there and then win a little bit more and then, and then went on the call side. And when it was all said and done, you know, after all this, you know, still up about 1400 on the day when you add everything together. Okay. But, so, but, but yeah, no, no, go, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll present my question in a second. Go ahead. Um, so again, this is one of those things where, um, you know, you don't want to have to do all this, but mm -hmm. again, you, you can, you can, you can at least get back to even, and you can even still come out to the good with managing this trade, you know, the bottom line, mm -hmm. which, which is, which is, which is great, right? This was, this mm -hmm. was a, this was a tough, that was a tough day. It looks like, it mm -hmm. looks like here that you actually, you got stopped out on the, on the call side and then no, you, well, you no, no, that was, that was a cash, that was a cash neutral adjustment on the call. Excuse me, call, 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 cash yeah. neutral adjustment, but you, but mm -hmm. you, you moved it, you moved it mm -hmm. higher mm -hmm. um, on the option chain. Yeah. And then, yeah. but it looks like, it looks like when you, when the, when the market dropped a lot, it looks like you moved the calls back down to, to the 4390 and, and that, and you won a decent amount over a thousand on that. Correct. Correct. Yeah, sir. All right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that kind of gives you a visual, you guys, how you have to play that seesaw thing that we talked about is that, you know, you know, sometime it gets out of whack on the call side and you have to, you know, rebalance the trade and sometimes it gets out of whack on the put side, you have to rebalance the trade. And so you, you had the moot, you did that cash in neutral adjustment. And then that, that was making, that was moving it away from at the money, the call side. And then you went back towards at the money by having to roll it, roll it technically down. Correct. So, okay. And again, you know, what, what are the downsides to this kind of stuff, guys? I mean, in a, in a big whipsawy market, I mean, and I don't know why the market was so whatever yesterday. Like I said, we didn't have any news or anything like that. I don't know if anything came out with the war because that, that was actually that was actually my trepidation. Mm -hmm. Now that we got a new war going on, I'm thinking like at any moment, any kind of announcement of any kind of escalation or this and that or whatever, you know, and the market could really react. And I don't know if that was the case with that big drop we had. Has anybody got any insight on why that happened? So if anyone else doesn't have anything, I think it was due to some Fed members coming out, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. Metals, and they were being yeah, dovish. It was. It was. There was a Fed member came out. He was very dovish in his talk about uh, effectively he was saying that they could sit and wait to see if the, if the, the various indicators catch up and mm -hmm. start to be real impact in terms of inflation and jobs and things like that. So well, and I look back on the calendar. Market bounce. Yeah, as I look on the calendar from yesterday, yeah, I see at one o'clock, uh, the FOMC member Waller speaks. Now it was a supposed to be a medium impact event, but that the market dropped a lot <laughs> when he started talking. So that's the thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I think I think it I think that's when it probably, um, you know, it either dropped a lot when he talked or recovered a lot when he talked. Whatever happened, right? But it 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 was definitely a, a seesaw type of day. But you you came out on top, which is really awesome trading. You must have had a must have had a little bit more time to kind of yeah, manage this yeah, yesterday. Exactly. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. And on the E-Trade account, where again I don't have as much flexibility, uh, mm -hmm. I basically just wound up scratching on the day there. Uh, okay. Kind of the same dynamics happened, but I didn't have uh, the ability to kind of recover as much or, or get positive on the day. So I did. That was one, basically a scratch there. Okay. So you know, as I look at things today, you know, we've had the core PPI pre-market. There was a little bit of um, kind of an initial sell off and then, a, and then it's back up. We got another Fed member speaking here and I'm definitely not entering until about 1130, 1145 and we'll see. Um, I don't feel great <laughs> about <laughs> that plus plus again though the ongoing war stuff or whatever, but yeah. All right, everyone, I'm going to jump All back right, over here. Yes, you can. Uh, it, it's, it's the doc. I was just saying, when, when he's doing his adjustments, I, I see on his sheet that he just the, the, the um, it's his sell side, but does he ever adjust the long side or does he keep that constant? Oh yeah, I, I, the longs, uh, yeah, the, I, I never move those, you know, so, and again, so you're gonna require some some buying power, pretty significant, you know, you're for rolling a position 15, 20, 20 points, you know what I mean? So that that's something to keep to consider, but I don't, I don't move my longs, no. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So great, great question. And he points that out in statistical day trading course. You're going to have to obviously have, you're going to have to allocate, make sure you have the buying power to do that. But it makes the adjusting, it makes it easier and cleaner. 
and because it's basically at that point a strangle for him and he's just doing the seesaw process that we talked about so if you initiate as wide as he, he initiates sometimes sometimes wide as 100 because he's only trying to get you're only trying to pay five cents for those long legs then you can see how much buying power it could require if you don't have portfolio margin um, which he does have portfolio margin with tasty trade so it makes it a little easier but not um, not significantly easier because they do require more buying power even with portfolio margin when you're doing short-term trades and this is the shortest it can be with options so keep that in mind um, but this is it's this is a, a you can still be super successful at this not doing it that way jack doesn't do it that way even though he understands it and learned from the statistical day trading course he he doesn't do it that way but jack has a substantial size account count as well but he doesn't do it that way